and welcome to Louisville's front yard, which our community living room. It's Waterfront Park. Nothing quite like this in the rest of the world, I think it's fair to say. Really honored to have our governor here with us today. He is no stranger to Louisville. You are here like no other governor has been in terms of showing up all the time, and we appreciate that. Let's hear it for our governor. There's a bunch of other folks here I'd like to recognize uh, as well. Uh, Metro Council members I've seen out here. Of course, we have President David James, who we'll be hearing from in a second, as well as Councilman Ja'Cory Arthur. I think I saw Councilman Bill Hollander here with us as well. And former council people Sherry Bryant Hamilton yeah. and David Cohn are with us, or Brandon Cohn are with us as well. So thank you all very much for coming out with us here today. And I must recognize David Karam over here leaning against one of the trees, the <laughs> founding executive director, CEO of Waterfront Development Corporation, Waterfront Park, who made so much of this happen under his watch, this whole thing. So David Karam definitely deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, imagine, if you can, what this place used to look like here. And uh, depending on what your age is, you will remember this was just a blight. Uh, and that was probably on a good day, David, you would call it a blight. But it was an old, nasty scrapyard here along the river. Uh, even as a young kid, you know, I would had enough sense that when I were driving by or coming over from Indiana, look at this and say, man, we should be able to do better than this and to have a scrapyard be the introduction to the great city of Louisville. And of course now it's a beautiful front yard. Any river city in the world would love to have a park like we have here at Waterfront Park. And I would say any waterfront would love to have a park like this. And we've been recognized and globally acclaimed for the beauty that this represents for us. Millions of visitors uh, from around the country uh, come to this every year from around the city as well just to see what's going on so they can enjoy learn and take it home as well this did not happen overnight 20 plus years of investment although the big majority of it happened before 20 plus years but this intentionality has produced a shared recreational educational space that annually attracts now more than two million people uh, just to enjoy the natural beauty that we have here and man-made in our seasonal attractions. The bridge uh, is the most popular attraction and the most anticipated attraction that was going to come to this park and it has not dis disappointed. Uh, if we were on the ocean that would be our esplanade if you would and it certainly more than fits the bill for us as a river city. So it's just incredible for us. A lot to be thankful for here with lots of benches, lots of Louisvillians and visitors. It's the most dynamic and diverse spot in our city, if you come out here and walk the bridge, you see a collection of Louisvillians that really represents all the faces that we have here in our city. This was an incredible project, as everybody will remember. It was kind of the bridge that went nowhere, and it just sat there for years and years. And again, as a kid, you'd wonder, you know, why is it still there? Well, we, we repurposed that now architecturally and, uh, from, and structurally and beneficially into what is just a great walk. Uh, connecting the states of state of Indiana with the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That was made possible when the uh, Bi-State Bridge Project took place, when we put both of the big bridges in, in town. It was about a $2.5 billion project uh, that made that happen. Part of the funds that were going to be part of that were repurposed to come over here, which then allowed us to do the great, magnificent walkway here, complete parts of the bridge, and then Indiana did their own thing as well. So. This pedestrian bridge and our vehicular bridges are connected in that fashion and part of our history as well. So the park, of course, has been built in phases over time. And those of us that have been here for a while, of course, remember the work and determination and commitment required to transform what was, as I said, unappealing industrial site into a beautiful community green, green space through phases one, phase two, and phase three. Then phase four. The master plan for phase four was approved by Metro Council in 2015. We allocated $950,000 in our 2016 budget for planning and land acquisition. And as with the first three phases of Waterfront Park, funding for phase four has come from a variety of sources, 
including requests to government, corporations, individuals, and foundations. In the meantime, we took this community-owned asset and used it as the uh, uh, founding space for the massive tunnel that goes underneath of our, uh, of our city for floodwater uh, retention. And Tony Parrott's here from MSD. So you say, okay, we own the spot. Let's make that so we go underground. And Tony, are we going six, is it six miles or three miles? Four miles tunnel that goes underneath here that is a retention basin when we have these you know, massively faster rainstorms that we have right now. So we took advantage of the asset that we own as a city that way. We're wrapping up that work, uh, great work by MSD there and many other places, so we can get on with developing the park aspect of uh, Waterfront Park Phase 4. City government has put in about $30 million plus dollars over the years for Waterfront Park, uh, untold money from other foundations, individuals, and then of course the state government has been a big partner of ours over the years as well. So today comes a proposal that could bring us a step closer now to expanding Waterfront Park Phase 4 into West Louisville between 10th and 14th Streets. It's 22 acres connecting our downtown and West Louisville to our community's front yard. So one step closer to having one waterfront connecting intentions and activities from Riverview Park to Beargrass Creek right over here and everything else in between. And then also when you think about, we've got about a billion five or so of investments taking place in the West right now. So think about the Waterfront Park as kind of the northernmost anchor of that activity, if you will, with Beecher being the east anchor, the track and field facility being the west anchor, and then 18th and Broadway being the south anchor of that uh, whole activity regenerating that part of our city. So having Waterfront Park here really uh, in the West is something that sparks it even further. So, a lot going on and a lot to be thankful for as we move forward today. So to talk to us a little bit more about that, uh, our governor is here with us, as I said, has been unparalleled with the amount of activity and attention he's given to our city in the time that he's been governor. A very difficult time, obviously, he gets elected, a pandemic comes along, and in my view, he's led us uh, very strongly and responsibly through this pandemic. So please welcome Governor Andy Bashir. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I want to thank uh, Mayor Fisher for that introduction and, and a little bit of history. I also want to say it is great to be in Louisville today. Yeah, I think I'm the first governor in a long time that was proud to say on the campaign trail that he lived in Louisville. He raised his family in Louisville. And I got to tell you, I love this city and I'm going to continue to do everything I can as governor to work together to move both Louisville and the Commonwealth forward. So today is a beautiful day at Waterfront Park. A little cold, maybe, but still beautiful here. And I'm so glad that you could all join us. We're here because we all want this for even more Kentucky families. How many of us here have a great memory in this park? I know I do. It's from how many times I could get my kids across that bridge because there's frozen yogurt on the other side, which meant you had excited kids going over and they were screaming about halfway back, or a great concert that you saw here, or watching the most incredible fireworks show in North America from here or another part of the park. If you're trying to be fit running your five first 5K, uh, right around here. So many different opportunities that have created such incredible memories. For so many in this city, Waterfront Park is not just a place, but is an experience. A place where they remember incredible moments with their families and with their friends. The backdrop for some of their happiest moments. No matter how you spend your time here, you go home feeling recharged. For 15 years, Louisville was my home and the place where Brittany and I raised our kids. We're about five miles either direction from the first house I took my kids home from the hospital to. I love taking them here and bringing your kids to outdoor spaces, especially living in a larger city, is so important for so many different reasons. And I believe it's time that this experience is accessible to all members 
of the Louisville community. It's about time that we had this experience in every part of this city. That's why in my upcoming budget proposal, I'm going to include $10 million over two years to support the waterfront park expansion between 10th and 14th Street. Now I know it's just a piece because this is rightfully an ambitious project and it should be done right. The expansion is going to cost about $50 million, making it the largest public amenity investment in West Louisville in decades. The expansion is going to give more families access to the riverfront, create more incredible memories. It's going to open more green space. And think about how important it's been for everyone, especially during the pandemic, to be able to get out in places like this and assuring that they are in every single neighborhood. The 22-acre expansion will be located in the Portland neighborhood under Interstate 64 between Louisville Riverwalk and Rowan Street. The expansion will include plazas, gardens, a large observation pier at the river's edge that can accommodate events, performances, and other gatherings. The project is going to connect downtown Louisville and West Louisville along the river, creating one waterfront. The first step in the expansion will be constructing playworks at Waterfront Park. Talk about a thoughtful way to start an expansion like this. Park staff are working with the Kentucky Science Center. Uh, where are you, Joe? What an incredible organization. Uh, to, to ensure uh, just an immersive experience, one that is beneficial for the development of kids and one that families can enjoy both playing and learning together. It's a really thoughtful way to put this together, and I'm so excited that we're going to push to see it become a reality. Representative Pamela Stevenson couldn't be here today because she had a prior commitment out of town, but she told me how excited she was for the park to be expanded into her district. She said, I love the beautiful spaces of nature in Shawnee and Chickasaw Parks. Increasing access to the Ohio River and increasing green spaces for families to enjoy will give West Louisville another community jewel. Even more important is how well we work together to honor the promise made to our residents and to improve our quality of the place. The waterfront is a must-see, must-do, and must-have amenity that enhances the natural beauty of West Louisville. She concludes by, this is a win for everyone. And I couldn't agree more. We want to keep the wins coming because if you haven't noticed team Kentucky right now is on a roll winning big it was just last month that we announced that we are in the midst of the single greatest year for economic development in the history of the Commonwealth now surpassing 10.4 billion dollars in new investment here in Kentucky and it, we're just about six weeks off of the announcement of the single largest project in the history of the Commonwealth. It's a company that we know well, that this city, Louisville, built the Model T for, Ford Motor Company. At nearly $6 billion, 5,000 new jobs, that Blue Oval SK Battery Park is going to make Kentucky, our state, the electric vehicle battery capital of the United States of America. It's going to ensure a bright future for our two facilities here in Louisville, where I believe we're going to see continued investment and I hope even more employment. But I want to say all of this says something about who we are. When Bill Ford Jr. came in to make that announcement, he told me two things. He told me, Andy, y'all know the Model T well in Louisville. And this is the single biggest step in the automotive industry since the first Model T rolled out of this city. The second thing he said is this is the biggest announcement and the biggest investment that this company has ever made. Folks, Ford Motor Company is betting their future. They're number nine on the Fortune 500 list. They're the largest employer of Americans. And so when a company like that has to bet their future, who did they bet it on? And who did they bet it with? The people of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That makes me pretty proud. How about you? So we are at a special time and a special place with companies like GE Appliances announcing in the same year 
$60 million of investment and 250 new jobs, and then $450 million in investment, 1,000 new jobs. Every week we see more opportunity and we have a chance to be at a historic moment in time where we are at the cusp of an era of prosperity the likes of which we haven't seen. But we know something about historic moments, having lived through and continuing to live through a difficult one in COVID. And if we are moving into another, I think the same lesson applies. So the great lesson of COVID is that everybody counts, that everyone is important and has value, and that if we are going to lift our state up, if we are going to protect one another, every single person has to have opportunity. That's why, as governor, my pledge is to make sure this prosperity reaches every part of this state and every neighborhood of this city. Today, I think is an announcement of an investment that helps make that happen, that recognizes that we all count. And far too often in historic moments, the same people are left out. But if we can get it right at this moment, then maybe we can get the next moment right, and the moment after that, and the moment after that. And I hope we took a step in that direction when we launched Everybody Counts just last week. We believe that that is a historic partnership between Evolve 502, JCPS, Ford Motor Company, UPS, GE Appliances, and Kroger. The goal is to ensure every single graduating senior this year, and we hope every year after, is either set with the dollars they need for higher education or already signed up for a good job before they leave high school. Everybody counts. Everybody has value. And we want to make sure that everybody succeeds. I am so excited about the opportunities that lay in front of us. One where Kentucky will never be a flyover state ever again. Where nobody is ever going to be able to look down their nose at us ever again. And I'll tell you what, if other states want to keep making fun of our accents, let's go steal their jobs too. Again, an exciting time. I'm so excited for the leadership that is here today, uh, but also with us all across this city. Let's make sure we do this right. Let's make sure these dollars stay in the budget, and let's make sure we get this expansion done. Thank you all very much. All right, Gov, thank you very much. A big step to make this happen. So everybody, please exhort your legislators to help us through this budget process. I want to introduce our Metro Council President, David James, who's been a good partner on this project for many years. Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mayor Fisher. And Governor, i am learned a lesson. I'm not going to come behind you for another speech again. That was fantastic. Um, first of all, I just really want to say thank you to Governor uh, Bashir for the leadership that he's showing uh, with the development of the Waterfront Park moving westward. I think that having uh, the Waterfront Park moving westward in our city uh, to allow children and families to enjoy this beauty that everybody else gets to enjoy right here is going to be beautiful and exciting for the entire community. Uh, the work that Governor Bashir has shown um, throughout his entire time of being our governor uh, for his love for this city and for this state has been immeasurable. And I just really want to take the time to applaud you and say thank you for everything. And as for Metro Council and this park, working with the mayor's office, over the last years, few years, to invest over $30 million into this park it has been a great partnership. And to see what's developed and the work of David Karam and all of his work and leadership and now with Deborah Belitsky uh, leading things and, and moving forward, I just want to say thank you very much for your work. And thank you, David Karam, for everything. It's been outstanding. Uh, for both of you, your leadership, thank you. Uh, <laughs> For both of you, your leadership uh, is amazing. Uh, going to the board meetings with you all and, and working with everybody and building stakeholders and, and working with the community. I remember traveling with Deborah just as the pandemic was hitting and we were going through all sorts of neighborhood meetings talking about West Louisville and the expansion westward of the park and she was at every single one of those and I just want to say thank you for that. And I see Bill Hollander standing directly behind you, the budget chair. 
Um, so there's going to be some pressure on you, Bill, for uh, following through as we come through at our next budget to make sure that we help the governor with this uh, announcement and make more good things happen as we move westward with the park. With that being said, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Also, I'll recognize another David, David Tandy, another former Metro Council person over here. Thank you so much for being here with us. Councilman, uh, recognize Deborah Poliski. We want to remember everybody that we've got an exciting new restaurant coming over here to the restaurant space in a, a group called Pig Beach out of uh, Brooklyn. has got one of the premier barbecue concepts in town, so we expect, real, or in the country, so we really expect big things to come out of that. I know people have been looking forward to that restaurant being filled up. So this expansion obviously is in District 4. Councilman Jacory Arthur has been doing a great job uh, leading us in District 4 and also providing conscience to the city. I appreciate that. Please welcome Councilman Jacory Arthur. If you can hear me say peace, peace. Love, love, justice. justice. By a show of hands, how many of you have heard of a book called The Encyclopedia of Louisville? Anybody? Okay. I'd like to lift a story, it's a quick story from that book to parallel why this day is so important, why it's so historical. There was once a politician in Kentucky in the mid-1800s by the name of Lavelle Harrison Rousseau. He was an alderman, a state senator. He was outspoken about his support for the Union. And as the Civil War approached, he was appointed as a general in Louisville. As a general, he fought in dozens of battles with the Union Army to abolish slavery. He led a cavalry of over 400 miles through the Deep South before joining General William T. Sherman. And if you don't know who General Sherman was, he was the general who issued Special Field Order Number 15, also known as 40 Acres and a Mule, also known as Our Reparations. That's who Rousseau joined forces with as he fought for emancipation. Our fellow Kentuckian Rousseau was dedicated to the black American freedom struggle, or so it seemed. Because on this day, November 30th, 1865, Rousseau resigned his commission in the Union Army because he was elected to Congress. And as soon as he got to Congress, he had different political views. He supported President Andrew Johnson, a president who not only overturned promises made to freedmen, but made their lives a living hell. Rousseau became such an overt racist that he severely beat one of his fellow congressmen after a debate where that congressman wanted to give more power to freedmen. Rousseau changed up on justice. Rousseau switched up on freedom. Rousseau gave up on us. But today, this November 30th, over 150 years after the day that elected official gave up, your elected officials are giving due. This expansion that I don't even refer to as phase four, I like to call it Waterfront West. My kids, residents of the Russell neighborhood, they love this park. And after the expansion, they can walk to it. In fact, Tens of thousands of West End residents will be able to walk to it in 15 minutes or less. This is important because the Waterfront Park is a world-class park. It's a world-class institution, largely in part by someone we haven't thanked today, which is our maintenance crew who keep this park looking spotless 365 days a year. It's a world-class park because of them, because of the staff, in their hearts, in their heads, and what they do to impact the health of our city by not only just taking care of the park itself, but the people around the park, surrounding the park, engaging with residents, working with Colors Magazine, a black-owned media company to make sure we get proper feedback, making sure that they prioritize which section of the park gets built so that we don't displace people who actually call this park home, literally living in an encampment that I'm proud to say through the American Rescue Plan, we will house. 
that housing is long overdue. This park expansion is long overdue. The investment in something for our families is long overdue. I look at that river and think about how my ancestors used to stand at the waterfront, look across that river at emancipation, and now their descendants will stand at the waterfront with the river as a backdrop for recreation from the multi-zone playworks playground to community programming that we need your input on. I'm biased, but I'm willing to say that a waterfront park in the West End will be Waterfront Park's best end. But let me be water bottle with the label ripped off clear. Your local government supports this park. Your governor obviously supports this park. But if you know of an elected official from here to Frankfurt beyond and every place in between who does not support this park, who does not support our freedom struggle, who does not support our 40 acres and a mule, then they simply don't support justice. And last year, in 2020, we heard a whole lot of folks talking about justice. This year, we got the American Rescue Plan, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, eventually the Build Back Better Act. And we need our elected officials to put their money where their mouth was. We need them to join us in this fight. We need them to support our West End families. We invite our governor to join us in this fight, our unfinished fight for a national reparations debt. We invite our whole state to understand the connections in those needs from Western Kentucky to Western Louisville. This park is on a long, long list of those needs. A national study shows that in nearly all cities, parks that serve non-white communities are nearly half the size of parks for white communities. And when we analyze income, it's even worse. On average, there are 25 acres for majority low income serving parks, but 101 acres for majority high income serving parks. And a park isn't just something nice. It just looks nice. It's something that helps you live nice. Our life expectancy in the West End in some parts is over a decade less than our brothers and sisters in the East End. That's a reflection of a lack of resources a lack of green space, a lack of a tree canopy. The hottest neighborhoods in almost all of our cities, 94% of our cities, the hottest neighborhoods were red line communities, our communities. That is what kills us. In 2020, the Trust for Public Land assessed the 100 most populated cities in America and Louisville's park score ranking was number 81. And when an equity index was added in 2021, Louisville's park score ranking dropped to number 90. And that's to no fault of the people in recent years. This is over a century and a half of disinvestment. But that changes today. That changes today over 150 years ago when one of your elected officials gave up on you, we stand with you and we say that will no longer happen. I stand here today as one of those elected officials proudly born, raised, and still living in the West End of Louisville who will never give up on you. As a member of a group, the Parks for All Workforce, looking at every single park and recreational activity in this city, assessing it, looking at those inequities to make an investment plan. We're only the third city in the country to do that. We are here to say that we no longer accept failure. We no longer accept disinvestment. And I thank the governor for his support. Happy belated birthday, by the way. I thank our community members for their support engaging in this process, not letting elected officials break their promises on justice. This is for us. I can't wait to enjoy it with you. And when it's here, make sure you support it. Support those businesses. Engage in the process with community feedback. Take care of the park. Because we, as government, and I'll make sure of this, we will invest. But we're counting on community to help us with the rest. Because as you've heard me say over and over and over, everyone in Louisville is responsible for Louisville. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate you. Uh, also want to say thank you to all the Waterfront Board, uh, Waterfront Board members, uh, citizens that are serving and helping out each and every month. Lots of committee meeting, meetings in between uh, overseeing this dramatic development here along the riverfront, and we are far from being done, as you hear, heard here today. So Waterfront Board Chair Chris Jones is with us today, and he is now going to tell us what the public can expect as the expansion gets underway. Chris? Well, those are uh, four impossible acts to follow, but I will do my best. Thank you, Mayor Fisher. Uh, I'm honored and excited to be here today for this important announcement from Governor Bashir. Thank you, Governor Bashir, for your vision and your leadership to make this possible. And to echo something that was said earlier, this park is long overdue. And I welcome the support of all the people gathered here today to make this a reality. From a scrapyard in the 1970s to an award-winning community treasure today, Waterfront Parks Development and Stewardship has transformed downtown Louisville. The next chapter in that transformation starts today with all of your help. Like Mayor Fisher noted, Waterfront Park is our community gathering space. It provides a welcoming venue for the entire community and region to come together to celebrate, connect with each other, and access the river that defines our city. Over 2.2 million visitors enjoy the park each year from the entire region, and we host hundreds of unique events of all types and sizes. All of that is what makes Waterfront, Waterfront Park truly a park for everyone. State funding of this 22-acre westward expansion of the park will help bring healthy outdoor recreational space and world-class amenities to thousands of residents in the Russell and Portland neighborhoods. Long overdue. It would also help attract visitors from the entire region. The Westward Park expansion will also unite our city along our waterfront and further a long-held dream of many of us of one waterfront, extending all the way from Riverview Park to Beargrass Creek. Phase four will include new and exciting amenities of the same world-class quality that made Waterfront Park so great, but unlike anything we currently have in Waterfront Park. This is a $50 million investment and one of the largest public amenities to be built in West Louisville in decades. Um, we will start with Playworks at Waterfront Park, uh, a wonderful collaboration with the Kentucky Science Center. This 1.5 acre experience driven learning area developed in collaboration with the Kentucky Science Center will include STEM based learning components in an interactive outdoor play experience. If you've ever been to the Kentucky Science Center, imagine bringing that experience outdoor and you know it's just wonderful. I encourage everyone to go to our website and look at what Playworks will be. In addition to that, the expansion of the park will include plazas, gardens, picnic areas, and an observation pier large enough to hold events such as weddings and live performances. I challenge anyone, this will be per capita the best that Waterfront Park has to offer. And I hope that all of Louisville can one day come there and enjoy these amenities in the near future. I want you to also know that we've engaged the community throughout this entire process, and we will continue to do so moving forward because your voices matter to us in the manner in which we build this park and what it has in it. There's too many thanks to go around here, so I will try and do this quickly. I want to thank the governor, first and foremost, for his commitment to include $10 million in his executive budget. Thank you to Mayor Fisher and Metro Council members David James, Bill Hollander, Ja'Cory Arthur, and former council uh, people Sherry Bryant Hamilton and David Tandy, all in attendance today. The initial funding that came from Metro government, the $6 million that's been included in the last two fiscal years, is what made today possible. Uh, I want to thank Deborah Belitsky, our executive director, without whom none of this would be possible, and our former executive director, David Karam who got the ball started and created everything you see here today. Thank you to our hardworking board of directors. Thank you especially to Ted Nixon, who's here with us today, who has led our phase four working group over the last several years. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge some private parties who were our early leadership gifts in our private fundraising campaign, which will kick off in earnest after this press conference today. They are, and many of them are here today or have representatives here today. The James Graham Brown Foundation, Matt and Fran Thornton, Brooke Brown Barzoon, Augusta Brown Holland, the Geens Foundation, and the Norton Foundation. Thank you so much. 
Since our inception, Waterfront Park has been a partnership between state, Louisville Metro, and the community. We did not put this together on the backs of one contribution from one of those groups. It was all of those groups coming together to create the waterfront park you see today, and it will be those groups coming together to create phase four that you will see in the future. In the meantime, we invite the community to learn more about waterfront phase four. Go to our website, ourwaterfront.org, for more information about the park, and we hope that if you're inspired by what you've heard here today, you'll consider contributing time, your talent, your treasure. We'll take it all, because we're gonna build this park. It is long overdue. Thank you very much. All right, folks, thanks for coming out. This is how you see things get done. Metro Council, Mayor's Office, Governor's Office, great board here, philanthropy, other local donors. So it takes all of us to get this done, and we look forward to seeing you at the groundbreaking for Waterfront Park Phase 4. Thanks for coming out today.